Hi, in this video I thought we'd just have a quick look at the new style scan and cut canvas online. Now, you probably know if you've watched previous videos of mine that I use a Mac, but on a Windows based PC, everything here should look the same. I'll point out any differences as we go along. So when you log in to Scan and Cut Canvas online, this is normally what you would see. Down here at the bottom is normally where it will post any information with regards updates. And as you can see from here now, it's showing that it was last updated on 1st of September and that the software version is 2.0.0. .0 .0. This little pink icon up here, top left, is because I have the rhinestone feature activated. So if you don't see this, it's probably because maybe you haven't bought the rhinestone kit and activated it using the code. So we'll just go along over to the top right hand side at the moment. This is my login name and when you select this this just gives you your login information and it shows you anything that you've activated so the rhinestone kit the sticker kit that kind of thing the next icon along brings you to your projects the next icon along is your logout the question mark are all the help files so you've got a help PDF, you've got help with the rhinestone function, the wireless network connect connectivity, which I don't have, any frequent, frequently asked questions, and then other links. And then the Brother logo takes you to the Brother website, where you can go and check for updates. The two icons just below are the view that you see here in the main body of the screen. So if you want to see more of your projects, you select these four boxes and you'll get smaller icons and more projects. I prefer to see the bigger icons. And then when you click on this tab, My Projects, that will take you to all the files that you have in your projects. So if I open a blank page, the things on the left hand side here don't appear to have changed. So you've still got all your basic shapes and your borders and your logo and your text and your rhinestone. But what we have got is this little arrow that points to the left. And when you select this, it gives you a bigger working area, which is nice because sometimes I like to put shapes off the map while I'm dealing with other shapes that are on the map. And before, when that border section here was showing, it could sometimes get a little cluttered and get in the way. So I like that feature. So that's the first thing that's different. Then if we go... Well, I'll start along here with the icon. So basically, there's your project title. So once you've designed something here, you give it a title and you put it in here. The, the, the first box here is create a new project. Um, Canvas still doesn't seem to offer the opportunity to have more than one tab open, but that would be nice if Brother could give us that in the future. So this first icon is just to create a new project. The second icon here is called overwrite this project. Now frankly I think that's a bit confusing So, because to me overwrite means you're changing something that you've done previously but basically this is your save. So if I had a design on my map say this and I wanted to save it I would type the title in here and then I would come to this second icon hit this icon which says overwrite this project which basically is save and that's how you save. The next icon along is your image tracing. So this is the one as we had before where if you have 
a bitmap or a GIF or a JPEG or a PNG that you is your own design or you've got from the net and you want to trace it to make a cutting file, this is the icon you, you would use as before. The SVG icon lets you import SVG files, DXF files or scan and cut FCM files. So if you've got something saved on your computer or you've downloaded it from the internet and you want to convert it in Canvas, that's the icon you use there. The big purple arrow is your select tool. So that, you know, just lets you, once you click off this, if you want to then come back and select it or you've been using another icon like the path icon and you want to go back to the select, you just hit that and that deselects any of the other icons. Your path icon hasn't changed. You still use that if you want to say draw a straight line. You click once, hold your shift key down, double click to anchor your line. That's your path icon. The next icon along is your freehand draw. So again, you just draw as you go and that will just draw anything you, you draw with your mouse. Undo, same as before. Just get rid of anything you don't want. If I select this icon and um, this shape here now, that gives me the option to use the trash can to delete it, or I can go into the properties box. Now, the properties box is similar to what we had before, only it just looks slightly bigger to me. So you can keep the maintain aspect ratio selected and you can choose to make your shape smaller or bigger by width and height or you can unlock the maintain aspect ratio and take the size bigger or smaller. Now there seems to be something that's changed here. In the previous version, we were able to type a measurement in here. So if I want to put 5.80 and select. And then the minute I go and click off this shape. It takes it back to 0.75 from 5.80. So we only seem to be able to make our sizes now in 0.25 increments. So that's something that seems to have changed in this version of Canvas. I have emailed both Brother US and Europe to ask if it's a bug or, or if we can have the facility back. And although I got an acknowledgement of my email, I've not had any response, so maybe if anybody else is having this same problem, and I know from our, my Facebook group people are, maybe if people start mailing brother and see if anybody else can get a response too, because it is a little bit annoying, because sometimes you do want to make something precisely. The box underneath, you can alter the rotation in degrees of plus and minus. And then these boxes here are the same. You can fill it with colour. You can make the outline the same colour or you can make the outline a different colour. Again, this section under here, nothing seems to have changed. You can assign your cut and draw lines and your dash lines. So all that appears to be as we had before. Now, if we go to the icons along the top, here, you can start a new project, you can overwrite a project, you can save as another project here. So if I made a change to this file and I'd previously saved it and I wanted to save it as a new file, I would go here and use this icon. This one here counts how many shapes you have on your page, it says it has two shapes. I'm not entirely sure why we would need that but maybe for the rhinestones or something like that, I'm not sure, but we've got the option. You've got the image trace button again here that is over here, 
and you've got the import SVG DXF or FCM icon again here that you've got here. Edit, I'll select something and click edit. Don't know if this box moves, no it doesn't. So you've got your undo, you've got your cut, copy, paste, trash can again. You can add an offset line here. We used to have the icons along the top, I think, before. I know we've only had this um, version a couple of weeks, but to be honest, I've forgotten what icons we did have. So you can add an offset here if you want to, an outward, and say OK. And that's giving you your outward. Um, you've got your align tools here for if you want to align things. So if I get rid of this and select these two, come back to edit. This now brings all the align options. So you've got align by left, center, right, top, middle and bottom. You've got your flip and order icons. And then here, these icons used to be along the top. If I just close this down, they used to be along here. So now they're all under here. So you've got your weld, subtract, divide and remove overlap. View, you can fit to mat as you could before. Fit to selection, fit to all contents. So if you've got a lot of items on, you've got your zoom icons. You can choose to show only your cut lines, show only your draw lines, show the map. You can show the properties. So that's just going to bring this box up again. It shows you the properties of what I've got selected, so the size. And then premium is the rhinestones, and that's because I've got the rhinestone feature activated. I would imagine if, I've, if any of you have got the sticker icon activated, you will probably find your options under here as well. Now, if at any time you're here, and you want to go back to your projects, there are several ways to do it. You can come over here and go back to my projects. You can come over to the left and click the scan and cut icon and it will ask you, do you want to leave? And it will bring you back. So there's different ways of getting to your projects and or creating a new project. So we'll just create a new one again. Um, obviously you've got your zoom, let's put a shape on again. So you can use your zoom arrows to go down or up. If I take it back to 50% or you can click the magnifying glass and then click on the design. I tend to use this magnifying glass more than the up and down arrows. But, you know, you can do whatever you want. If you want to go back to just your normal map view at any time, just go to view, fit to map, and it will bring the map back on your page. One thing I forgot to say, under view, by default, it's usually set to show mapped image. But if you untick that, you will get just a nice, clean white background without any of the map rulers showing. And this is sometimes nice if you're doing a screenshot of something. And it just gives you a nice clear white background without getting all the lines on. But for everyday working, you might want to, you know, use the grid lines or use the ruler. So the next thing that um, I know from comments made on my Facebook group is how you save. Now, as far as I'm concerned, nothing really has changed here or nothing major. So to save your shape, as I say, you've got your shape on your map, you give it a title and you use this icon and save it. And then if you want to download it, you click on the download button here. You click on the download button and then you get this screen. Now, if you've got the wireless connectivity, this is where this icon comes in here. Or I think if you've got the the lead that collect, connects you to a computer, you'd use this. But this icon on the left here, download to PC, is basically what we had before. If you, ha if you just scroll over it, you can see it, it turns a different colour, this kind of pinky purple. And if you just left click, that will automatically 
download the file that you've selected into your downloads folder. Now I use a Mac and my downloads folder is just bottom right off the screen that you can't see it. But that file is there. Okay, now if you use Windows, you will have to probably go to your start menu or something like that and look where your downloads folder is. Or you may have along the bottom of your computer a taskbar that has a downloads icon or a downloads folder or something. And that's where the file will be. If you want to specifically say where you want to download your file to, you just right click on this icon. So instead of left clicking and letting it drop into a downloads folder, you mouse over it and then you right click with your mouse and you will get the options that we always had before. Now, as I say, I'm on a Mac, so I have download linked file as. Under Windows, as far as I can remember, you will probably have something that says save download file as or save linked file as and what whatever it says on your windows that's that's what you use mine's download link file now if i left click on this download link file it opens up my properties box which you would get on a windows computer I've not give this file a name, that's why it's showing as untitled, but in the normal course of events in Canvas, if you'd given it a name here and downloaded it, this would be where your name will appear. And by default, yours may look different to mine because as I say, I'm on a Mac, but you will get some kind of properties box like, box like this. And usually on the left is where you choose where to save it. So if I wanted to put this file onto my desktop, I would select desktop, click save, and it would download this file to my desktop. If I wanted to save this file to a USB stick, I would make sure I had a USB stick plugged into the back of my computer, and it would show up down here somewhere. Probably under devices, it would show up here as a USB stick. I would select that, and again, it would drop that file onto that USB stick. So you will have this option. If you haven't, it may be that the browser that you're using isn't compatible with this version of Canvas. You may need to swap browsers or maybe clear the cache or the history on your Windows computer and call up the browser again and see if that works. But this hasn't changed. So I know there's some confusion about people saying they can't save to memory sticks or USB sticks or they can't save it to the desktop. But as far as I can see, and, and I know a few people have, have commented in the Facebook group saying, yes, they've still got it. The only thing I can think of is when, I'll just close this down. When you click this download icon and you get this box, if you right click and you're not getting these other options, the only thing I can think of is, is that maybe your browser isn't compatible or maybe, but I don't know, maybe the version of Windows you're using isn't compatible with this system. That's something that you would have to look into. But I would think for the majority of people, this is still an option. So you've got two choices. You either just left click on this and it will drop into your downloads folder or you right click and you choose the option from here and then which once you choose this option you save it wherever you want to save it to so i hope that kind of clarifies that a little bit as with everything it does take a while to get used to how things look and where things are i have to say i did prefer having the other icons along the top the weld and subtract icons but once I've been using this for another few weeks. It will probably become second nature. So that was just a little overview of the new look Scan and Cut Canvas online. So I hope it helps. Please leave me any questions or comments in the comments box below the video. And please like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.